Hey guys, Ashley here. Today I want to show you my pre-planning process, but here's the deal. I have literally tried to film this thing like seven different times and the file will not for some reason convert to my computer and I'm sick of wasting paper. So I'm just going to leave it as is and we're just going to roll with it and I'll explain the process to you guys. So this is the um, Happy Planner insert that I use to pre-plan on. You absolutely do not have to have one of these. I've used blank paper. I've used um, the block pads, happy note inserts, like whatever you have works out great. I'll actually show you a different way here in just a minute as well. But this is what I had initially filmed on. This is what the spread or the insert actually looks like. So what I do is I draw this line down the middle and up here at the top I label each section. So this one here is for my catch-all planner because I have, I have separate planners. I'm sure you do as well. So this is for my catch-all planner. This section over here is for my social media and my coaching planner. And then over here on the left side, I always number it one, two, three, and I plan up to three priorities a day. I don't exceed three, and sometimes I may only have one priority for the day depending on what's going on, but I always plan out my priorities. But before I set and do all this, I actually start on the back of this paper. The first thing that I do is I set my results for the week. So these are the results that I want to create. These are very specific and they are focused on my goals. For example, one of my goals is to become a nurse. And in order to do that, I now need to pass the NCLEX. I've already graduated nursing school. So next up is NCLEX. So one of the results that I want to create this week is to study daily for the NCLEX. I can measure this because I can look back and see, did I actually study every single day? And I know that because I keep track of that. Another one of my goals is to... Um, continue on my weight loss journey and lose um, a few more pounds. So here it says lose two pounds. Here's the thing. I know people get so stressed out about weight loss, but I'll be honest with y'all. If I don't lose the two pounds this week, I don't beat myself up about it. And I don't want you guys to ever do that either if you didn't hit your goal. But the goal is to actually set goals and try to achieve them. Do absolutely everything that we can to achieve those goals. And if we don't quite hit the mark, that's totally okay. No big deal. So for this result, it says lose two pounds. And I, like I said, I like to get really specific here. So I wrote out exercise daily, eat clean daily with one cheat meal, post and track my food pictures in our challenge group and drink one gallon of water every single day. That's really specific. And I keep track of all of this. I keep track of my workouts. I use portion control containers and I track those containers inside of an app. And I also write it down in my planner. Um, I post pictures of my food inside of my challenge group that I have. So I am a health and fitness coach. I have a challenge group and me and the girls inside of there, we always share pictures of our food and stuff and then drinking a gallon of water every single day. I also keep track of that. So let's say at the end of the week, I, I um, lost a pound, which is totally fantastic. Like again, I'm not here to beat myself up, but I can look back and say, okay, what happened that I didn't actually hit that two pound mark? Maybe I didn't exercise as much as I had planned or um, you know, I only hit my gallon of water two days out of the week or my nutrition was just not on point. Well, then I can look and say, okay, well, how can we fix this for the next week? So that's my results list. I don't go crazy and plan like 10 different results for the week. I try to keep it simple, focused on the goals that I'm actually working towards right now. I mean, I have a ton of goals we all do, but I have certain goals that I'm going to achieve first. And that's where this results list comes in. The next thing that I do is I just start to brainstorm all the things that I want to get done this week. This is just me writing down anything that I can think of. And then from there, once I have that list, you'll see that I've underlined some things and these are top priorities. The things that I underlined are going to help me reach my results. So for example, meal prepping, that's going to help me reach my two pound weight loss goal, right? And I put an arrow here and it says Monday because I need to do that on Monday. So if you have day specific things, just write those in as well. Another one over here, for example, is I have um, team calls and book club meetings that I have. And I wrote down what days they are and times they are here. So like Monday and Thursday are my team calls at 830. My book club meeting is on Tuesday at 630. And so I write those down. And from there, I can take these things and I flip the page over and I can add them to this side. This side is very important as well because number one, it's got my priorities here, but also I can see everything that I'm planning for, for different categories of my life all on one page. And that's important because I notice, at least for me, and I'm sure you can resonate with this as well, but we tend to over plan, right? And then we get to the end of the day, we feel unproductive, we're um, aggravated with ourselves, like, why didn't I get more done today? But if you look at it, really, you probably planned out way too many things to do. And that's why we're not doing it. Because when we plan to do like 100 things, that's overwhelming. 
that makes you not want to start working towards your plans. So I use this, let's say for Monday, I have quite a few things going here on my catch-all planner. I've got some things happening here on my social media and coaching planner. So if there's anything here that I could actually move, I'm going to do that just so the day's not so overwhelming. Um, so this I marked off because I, I already did that and I didn't realize I had already done it. But um, for example, there these things here cannot be moved. Laundry, technically I can move that. I really need to get caught up on it. But if I don't get this done, that's not a big deal. It's not a part of my priorities list. And it's not things that are kind of set. Like my team call is set for 8.30 p.m. I'm not, I can't move that. So that's kind of how I do that. And I put day specific things down for whatever we have going on, which right now in my catch all, this is where I plan out like, well, I did plan out nursing school. I'm done with nursing school now. So now it's just studying for the NCLEX. So I used to plan nursing school here, um, you know, appointments for myself, for my son, for my husband, work schedules, anything like that that we had going on went into my catch all planner. But now we're all quarantined. I don't have that much going on here. So I actually devote a little bit more time over here. But you can see like, let's say I had... Um, maybe I only have just my book club meeting here. So maybe Tuesday would be a better day to get the laundry done, right? Because if I'm looking at my priorities list for Monday, I'm filming today. Hello. I'm food prepping today. Both of those things take a couple of hours. Studying is going to take a few hours. I have my team call, which takes a few hours. Well, that only takes an hour. But all these other things, if I can move those off of here, I absolutely will. So laundry, that can be moved. I'm catching up with my reading. It's not necessarily a huge priority of mine, so I can take that off of Monday and move it to Tuesday. Do you see how I'm doing this so everything's not getting so stressful? The other thing that I do, and I think this is extremely important, it may sound weird or whatever, but give it a try for me. I start to make a list every single week of the things that may distract me and throw me off my plans. So for example, cleaning. Y'all, I love to clean, but I will also use cleaning as a distraction to keep me from doing the things that you know, needs to get done, but maybe I don't necessarily want to do them. My phone, holy cow, what a big distraction that is. Messenger app, um, I'm in multiple groups and sometimes I spend way too much time in there. Another one would be notifications. Do I have a lot of notifications coming up and can I shut some of those off so my phone's not dinging or vibrating all the time? Um, not planning ahead with Jimmy, which is my husband. So here's what used to happen. I would kind of come in here, sit down and plan out my entire week, put a lot of effort into it. I was ready to crush the week, but then in his head, he also has plans for the week on things that he wants to do on specific days. And so then our plans would clash, right? And so things just weren't getting done the right way. So I know if I just take a few minutes every single week to sit down and kind of plan a little bit with Jimmy, like, hey, what do you have going on this week? Here's what I have going on. How can we work together so we both can get our stuff done? That helps tremendously. Y'all sit down with your spouse, your roommate, whoever lives with you, um, your partner, whatever, sit down with them and kind of plan your week out together. Um, parents changing plans. If my mom was to call me right now and say, hey, you want to go swimming today? I would say yes. And here's why this works. Normally I would just say yes, right? And I would ditch my plans for the day and I would go swimming, hence why I'm not getting stuff done. But because I've wrote this down, because I've made myself conscious of the things that can distract me, I'm telling y'all, when she calls me and asks me something, this pops up into my mind and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, Ashley, are you, is this just a distraction? And then I'm like, no, mom, you know, I really can't today. I have some things I need to do. Let's plan for another day. So that's just an example of some things that distract me. Write it down. I know it sounds weird. Just kind of plan for it. Just kind of become conscious of the things that can throw you off track. Now, another thing that I just started doing um, is using these Get Social inserts from the Happy Planner. I completely forgot that I had these, you guys. Holy cow. And I'm using this now to plan out my social media. Normally, I would write it all down right over here. Um, but... I can look at these two pages together and kind of see everything. So, oh, sorry for that squeaking. Um, so this is for Instagram and I just plan out my posts for the day. This is for IG stories. I write these things down because if I don't, I will forget to post on stories. Um, I write down my YouTube videos and I really want to do more IGTVs. I, ha I need to sit down and finish planning this out um, and kind of see. The reason why I like this is like, let's say, um, you know, here, Monday I'm filming. Well, I'm filming three different videos for the week. I'm getting them all knocked out today. I don't think it's a good idea to sit and try to film even more than that whenever I know I need to food prep and I also need to study. So to think that I could post an IGTV today, tomorrow, or Wednesday is not a good idea. However, Wednesday I can film, right? And then I can post an IGTV on Friday 
because that gives me time to film it, you know, maybe edit it Wednesday and Thursday and then have it scheduled out for Friday if that makes sense. So that's why I like doing this. It's to kind of help decrease the overwhelm. What I wanted to show you guys is that you do not need these to plan. You can use just a, a regular old insert from a Happy Notes. You can use a scrap piece of paper. But I wanted to show you guys this. Let's say you have four different planners or however many you have. Take them and kind of make just, it, this doesn't have to be cute, you guys. This does not, this is not going in, it can go in your planner, but like this is just the pre-planning process. I section this off into four different sections and this says Monday, this says Tuesday. We could do one here for Wednesday. Right, and let's say you've got a catch-all planner, you have a fitness planner, you have a social media planner, and you have a faith planner. And let's say that on Tuesday you have, um, I don't know, Bible study. Maybe it's with your church. It's like a virtual Bible study that you do. Maybe it's at, I don't know, 7 p.m. Um, and then maybe for social media, you're planning out your social media, and you know that maybe you want to um, post a YouTube video today. Just as an example, um, some of you guys may not have YouTube videos, and that's totally okay, and I did not spell that correctly. <laughs> but, um, you know, and you've got your workout here. You need to maybe meal plan here. And, um, you know, maybe Monday you need to film that YouTube video or maybe it's taking planner photos. So take pics for the week and maybe you need to edit those. And then maybe um, here on your, on your, in your faith planner, you also have uh, maybe, I don't know, a meeting with your pastor or something. We'll just write down meeting with church. Um, so this is where like meal planning, maybe that takes you a little while to do. Filming takes a little while to do. Maybe you're meeting with the church or the pastor or whatever takes a few hours. So maybe you don't plan 17 different things over here to do. You know, maybe that can wait until another day. And so this is why I like doing this is because I can see everything on one, one little spread here. And I can kind of see, okay, can I move some things around a little bit so some days are not so overwhelming and hectic? What things have to stay for that? Because we all have day specific things that, that have to happen that day or whatever. And so that's why I do this. Over planning creates overwhelm. And when we're overwhelmed, we don't even want to start on our to-do list or on the things that we have to do, right? Because it feels like it's such a big thing to do because there's so many things. That's why I do this. And I recommend that you sit down, you know, take 20, 30 minutes and pre-plan your week. It's going to help you be more productive. You'll get more things done and you'll actually be moving towards your goals. I am big on planning for my goals, you know, setting my goals and then planning for them and then actually taking action towards them. I don't let my goals become the thing that gets on the back burner because the laundry needs to be done. That laundry will be there when you get to it. I've got goals to accomplish, right? And so that's why I like doing this is because it really does help me focus on my goals, which again has to do with my results list for the week. So that is my pre-planning process, guys. If you have absolutely any questions whatsoever, please ask them down in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Come hang out with me on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, sickle.